Estimating the length of a yarn tail is a small issue, but it can cause a lot of frustration when we use the long tail cast on method. The tail is often either too short or too long, and the worst thing is that we know about that only after we cast on 100 stitches or so. If the tail is too long, we can always use it to seam knitted pieces together, or at worst cut it and discard the yarn. It's usually not a big deal unless we work with a limited amount of expensive yarn and we plan to use every bit of it. Things get much more unpleasant when the tail turns out to be too short. As a rule, we would have to undo the cast on, leave a longer tail and start all over again. After one of these unhappy instances a few years ago, I was determined to find a way to estimate the length of a yarn tail to make sure I never run out of yarn again. I found a number of ways, some better than others. I tested all of them and now I'm happy to share with you three ways that are quite accurate and do not require any complicated calculations. The first way is very accurate and it works well for any yarn and any size of the needles, but it is the most tedious of the three ways that I'm going to share with you in this tutorial. Here's how it works. Leave a tail around 40 centimeters, 16 inches long. I know that the space between my thumb and index finger is uh, about uh, 19 centimeters, so I'm going to measure it twice and here would be my approximately 40 centimeters. Then make a slip knot and place this uh, slip knot on the needle. And now we're going to cast on 10 stitches, but uh, make sure that you place the yarn tail on your thumb and the working yarn on your index finger, like this. And now just use long tail cast on to cast on 10 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And as you probably noticed, I'm not counting the slip knot. This, this slip, uh, slip knot is not counted as a stitch. So we have 10 stitches here plus a slip knot. Now make another slip knot uh, at the bottom of the last stitch. And this slip knot should be on the tail, not on the working yarn. It doesn't have to be beautiful, just any kind of slip knot or any other way to mark this spot will do. Then take the needle out, hold to the first slip knot and the second slip knot and unravel the yarn. Now we have the length of yarn that is enough to cast on 10 stitches. So we could technically measure this uh, yarn, then divide it by 10, multiply it by the number of stitches we need to cast on, and that would be the length of our yarn tail plus some more for the for the tail for the short tail right but we can also do it without any calculations and simply measure the the yarn by folding it so fold it once for every 10 stitches you need to cast on so here i have enough yarn to cast on 30 stitches because i have three strands then 40 stitches 50 and so on The second way is not as accurate as the first way, but it is much, much easier. It is so easy that it is probably my most favorite way to estimate the length of the yarn tail. The only thing to remember is that this way works only for yarns in DK and worsted way. It could be quite a bit off when we work with bulky yarns, so keep that in mind. The idea is very simple. The length of yarn between your fingertips and your elbow is enough to cast on 30 stitches. So simply hold the yarn end with your fingertips, then measure the length to your elbow, and that is enough yarn to cast on 30 stitches. Then fold this length one time for every 30 stitches that you plan to cast on. That's how simple it is. The third way is very different from the previous two ways. Instead of estimating the length of the yarn tail, we will use two separate strands of yarn to make sure we do not run out of the yarn tail. These two strands can come from two balls of the same yarn or they can come from the inside and outside of the same ball. So this uh, strand comes from outside the ball. So I'm going to go inside, 
find the other tail and that would be my second strand. So now align these two strands and make a slip knot using both strands together, like this. Then place the slip knot on the needle and start casting on stitches for your project. So we don't need to cast on just 10 stitches anymore. We, start, we can simply start casting on stitches for the project. And at this point, it doesn't matter which of the strands lays on your thumb or index finger because we have two equal strands that come from the same ball of yarn. It doesn't matter at all. So cast on all stitches for your project. And when you're done, cut one of the strands, leaving a small tail, just long enough to weave in um, later on. And then turn your work and work on the first row of your project. So simply follow the pattern instructions to work stitches um, for the first row of your project but don't work the last stitch. Stop when you come to the double stranded slip knot that we created at the very beginning. Now take this, uh, the needle out of the slip knot and unravel it, just like this. And then turn your work and continue working on the project. The downside of this way is that it creates two additional um, tails that we need to weave in later on. But it's a great way to make sure you don't run out of yarn as you cast on stitches. Even if you don't use any of the ways described in this tutorial and occasionally run out of the yarn tail before you cast on all stitches you need for the project, all is not lost. In her book, Knitting Without Tears, Elizabeth Zimmerman recommends aligning the short tail with another strand of yarn and casting on one stitch using these two strands held together. Then drop the old tail and continue casting on using the new longer strand of yarn. When the project is finished, simply weave in those tails and no one will ever know that you miscalculated the length of the yarn tail when you cast on stitches. To read this tutorial as a set of step-by-step -step photo instructions, follow the link in the description. To download it as a PDF, join the club or our community on Patreon. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you in the next tutorial.